Welcome back to the Sixth Gear Garage. Today I am gutting the engine bay of this 1980 Toyota long bed. I already showed how to remove the engine in a previous video. Now it's time to take out everything else. I'm removing any extra weight from the front end so the cab won't slide nose down when I lift it with the hoist. So as I'm taking things apart over here, I noticed something really ugly I hadn't seen before. Now I did see this, which didn't bother me too much, but now that the overflow tanks are gone and the radiator's out, I'm able to see over here, and that is a very poor repair job. I don't know all the history of this truck or what happened to it, but it was definitely in some sort of front end collision on this passenger side. Here's the driver's side for comparison, and this is what it should look like. Notice there's sealant there. There's no sketchy welds and there's not rust. And I don't know what happened over here, but that looks pretty sketchy. Now I was already considering doing a video on replacing the radiator support anyways, because you can see there is a nice uh, ding there in the center. And of course, I did remove the front radiator support as well as both inner fenders from the parts truck. So I do have the parts needed to replace this whole section. And even though I just wanted to get this truck together and get it out of here so I can get the floor runner in and start working on that, uh, the right thing to do here is gonna be to rip this all out and rebuild it properly. And that means pulling a lot more out of this engine bay, which is gonna add a lot of time to the project to do all this. But I think in the long run, it'll be worth it. And while I'm already this far along, would be the ideal time to repaint the engine bay anyways. I did apply some oil to these brake line fittings first, and amazingly, not a single one was seized up due to rust. Same for the master cylinder bolts. In the past, I've had them snap the studs right off the brake booster because they were completely seized due to rust. That wasn't too bad, but the last thing you have to take care of is uh, the brake booster, the steering column, and all of these cables and wires. And that's gonna involve doing some work up under the dash. Now for the steering column, 
scrape off all the grease and somewhere in there, you see it right there. There is a huge snap grain. There's one hole and there's the other. Now, it had been a while since I removed one of these while the steering column was still in the cab. And I thought that if I gave it some hard pulls, kind of like a slide hammer, then it would pop the seal out and the shaft would be free. I think that might have worked for me at some point in the past, but as you can see, that was not happening today. If you guys know of a correct way to get the shaft disconnected from the column, let me know down in the comments. So I ended up using a couple of tiny flathead screwdrivers to pry out the seal at the edge, but ended up bending the edge of the seal by doing it that way. Let me show you guys the easy way to remove an e-brake cable from the emergency brake handle of a Toyota pickup truck. Pull this out a little bit. Remove this 12 millimeter nut. And this holds the switch in place. Pull the switch out. Now the handle has a little bit more room to go in farther but it's not quite there yet. Notice there's still about maybe an inch, three quarters of an inch gap right here. We get a flathead or some needle nose and grab this little pin on the, on the ratcheting system and pull it back. Slide that in. Now you can see the stopper here is all the way against the plate that the switch mounted to. Now I'll come around to the engine bay and you can see the handle has extended that extra three quarters of an inch through the firewall and I can easily slide the cable out. And now the cable is removed. Once again, I come from working on the second gen trucks. I didn't need to take off any of this. All I had to do was reach right under here and I already had full access to the clip right there. Next time, I'm gonna be drilling out all of the spot welds that hold on this inner fender and this front radiator support. And once I get these damaged parts removed from the cab, I'm gonna be welding in the front radiator support and the inner fender from the Southern Parts truck. Thanks for watching.